you were to, how old are you? Do you mind me asking that? I'm 26. Bing, bingo, bang on. If yeah. if if you were to make a few calls, how likely is it that you could get yourself invited to a party this weekend? Uh, yeah, you, you know, snap of the finger, snap of the finger, wow. snap of the finger, there snap of the is. finger. There it is, you but, see. So, so Pretty Patel, oddly, a lot of middle-aged journalists like me, and I've stopped myself from doing it, uh, largely because I've seen so many others do it already, but lots of middle-aged journalists like me are going, why has she introduced this? This is ridiculous. Is it just me, or is this the stupidest thing? And actually, she, she is aware of a genuine problem, which is that the youth, the youth of today is, uh, is attending parties, still attending house parties on an industrial scale. The thing is, uh, it's actually a really good policy to bring in because, I mean, I've, like I've said, I'm not really attending these parties anymore, but that £800 fine would deter me from attending the parties. It, it, it really would. Ah. So I, 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 it would. It right, would we need a klaxon. So, so this is a, a, a decent policy alert from, this, from Pretty Patel, possibly the I first mean, time ever. I mean, if you, if you were to think about New Year's Eve... I didn't go out New Year's Eve. I just chilled with a, a couple of my friends. I didn't, I didn't go out. But I don't, I don't even think you were supposed to do that, Michael, were you? It just was to two. Be... It was two. It was oh, two. So oh, I'm going to give myself a bit of... Yeah. I'm give myself a, a little slap on the, on the wrist for that. But right. the amount of parties on New Year's Eve was absolutely ridiculous. Was if it you were really? On social media, there was parties with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And the thing is, obviously, the police are going to shut down parties. And if you've been to a party, most times you've been to one that's been shut down. So... You know how um, how how easy it is for the, for the police to do that. If there was an eight pound fine to do so, a lot of people would stay indoors. Because I, I I feel like a lot of long people are like look, we know there's a virus. But if, about. if the parties you could attend are still going on this weekend, then the eight hundred quid threat probably isn't as an effective a deterrent as we might hope. It would because once you know somebody that has has received the fine, then that's how it starts to deter the parties because. For, I don't know, when the £10,000 fines were happening, it wasn't until I heard a story about um, a kid in Nottingham had a £10,000 fine. That's why a lot of people went, oh, OK. Oh, did they? Did they? Yeah. A lot of people said, OK, it could happen. But I know some people that they're like, OK, we're not, we're not doing it anymore because it, it is doable. I think after this weekend, if there are people starting to get fined, there'll be a deterrent in it. It's not going to stop it completely because... People are creative. There's ways of getting away, of getting around it. Why, why but, is it? I mean, I, listen, I was young. I, I put me in a position where I'm about to say I was young once, honest. But I, I, I was also, you know, I, I, I'm not unfamiliar with illegal raves and what have you. And, and I, can't, I can't imagine for a minute what I'd have been like if I was 26 now. I, I, I know I was a lot less responsible. I was an even bigger idiot than I am today. But, but what is it? What's, what's not landed, Michael? Why is it that we've got, you know, give or take, there's 100,000 people who've died of this virus, and yet people in their late teens and 20s are still desperate to fight for the right to parte. I think it's two things. I think it's first um, the fear of the virus. So... As, well, you as mean they know, don't have it? They don't have the fear of the virus? We don't, we don't have the fear. No. The first lockdown, there was a big fear on the virus. Like, I remember a lot of people that had asthma that were young. They were yeah. like, okay, this could affect me. Yeah. As we're learning more about the virus, a lot of these people no longer have that fear. So it's like, okay, I've, I've got asthma, I'll, I'll be fine. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And obviously, and obviously we, don't, we do know that obviously it is affecting like, you know, millions of people that have underlying health issues that but are old. But there's a lot of people that, they're seeing that have had the virus that are 70, yeah. 80 might be. So that COVID, enforces so. the idea that it's not going to happen to me. Exactly. That is it's the, um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember what the theory is, but the idea of it only, when it affects me, that's when it matters. If it was a killer virus that was killing anybody, no matter what age, everyone's staying indoors, there wouldn't be this issue. And I think there's also the problem of a lot of, you know, the anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers, Putting the rhetoric of it's just it's just a virus. The idea that mental health is more important than mm. the actual virus. There's a lot of people putting that rhetoric out that there's no need to stop my life. My mental health could be affected. And some people are saying that obviously the house me partying helps my mental health, which is a bigger bigger pandemic yeah. than, than and, actual, and there's a, there's than a